most empaths don't know this about themselves, but their sensitivity, though sometimes challenging, gives them access to these five powerful spiritual gifts. Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening process. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you five powerful spiritual gifts that every single empath on this planet possesses, whether they know it or not. Number one, inner alchemy. That sounds kind of cool. Basically what I'm saying is that you have an uncanny ability to make use of the challenges, even the unfair injustices you've experienced in your life, the pain, the trauma. You are meant to and have the ability to transcend it, to transform it, to alchemize it. There's a song I love by a woman named Nessie Gomez. A lot of you might not have heard of her, but I bet you'd like her. She's a really cool, cool artist. And one of the lyrics is, my darkness, is shining, your darkness is shining. You can see I'm not a singer, okay? You have the ability to make your darkness shine. A lot of empathic people are what they call a wounded healer. Empathic people tend to, to incarnate into challenging life situations sometimes, especially early childhood. You may have gone through some things that, you, that were like kind of unusual and rare and painful. Um, but unlike a lot of people who may have also had those same experiences, you found a way to get your head above water. You found a way to not allow those things to define you. You found a way to transmute them into now the person you are. When I was nine years old, I was sitting and watch, watching a fireworks show, a neighborhood fireworks show. Out of about 100 people, the very last firework, ironically, which happened to be a huge one, in fact, it was an, an illegal firework, after it was lit, it tipped over and shot at me. Out of 100 people, this innocent nine-year-old little kid, boom, blasted by a firework. I have sizable scars on my stomach, arm, got a tattoo over it, and hand to this day. It was extremely traumatizing. It, it, it made my adolescent years a nightmare. I was riddled with anxiety and insecurity. I literally developed the belief from that core incident that I am damaged. You can imagine the ripple effect that had into my life. Now, I'm not saying it's to say poor Victor. I'm grateful that happened. That, that made me an amazing coach, an amazing speaker. Um, it made me able to really feel the pain of other people and relate with them on a very intimate level. I am an example of a wounded healer and most of you are too and that's what really gets through to people. And here's another example of that briefly. The firework incident, as you may be not be surprised, eventually after high school led me to become a, a drug addict. And for a couple years I struggled with, with heroin, very serious drugs for a little while there. And when I was in rehab, none of the addicts preferred to listen to the therapists who weren't also addicts themselves, who weren't recovering addicts. We only wanted to hear from the people we knew had been there, done that, and felt that, okay? Now, not everybody's able to rise up from their challenges, but you are. Even if you still feel like you're processing right now, you're in the middle of transmuting your darkness. And not only are you going to be able to make good out of every single painful thing that's ever happened to you in life, you're going to be able to radiate a certain energy that is extremely appealing and comforting and soothing and uplifting to other people. Whether you become a formal helper or guide or not, you're gonna have the energy, the, the frequency of powerful transformation. And that's exactly what the world needs right here and right now at this time. Because most people, they don't know they can do it. They don't know they have it in them. Everyone does. And you came to be that shining example of what it means to transmute your darkness, to alchemize your pain. Number two, energetic mindfulness. You have an uncanny ability to foresee how other people are gonna to respond to what you say and what you do. That's why it's so hard. That's why empathic people tend to struggle with setting boundaries because you don't like how it feels to disappoint somebody else. You can literally sort of, in a very like 
not, not trying to be too esoteric, but you have, you're able to sort of read the energy of, of a room, of an environment, including the people, right? And it's ideal for you to maintain that, so to keep it sort of positive. So if someone says, hey buddy, I know I never help you, I know I'm never there for you, but would you mind dedicating your entire weekend to helping me move a bunch of heavy belongings from my house? And you're like, okay, sure. Because when you say no, you can feel that what they feel. You can feel the, the harmony sort of dissipate into frustration, angst, right? Now, there's a whole other flip side to this. For this reason, for your, your brilliant ability to read other people's energy and sort of tap into their emotional field, whether you want to or not, you make amazing therapists, counselors, healers, psychics, guides, coaches, mentors, etc. Okay? A good coach, a good helper doesn't necessarily have all the answers, but they're able to read the other person. They're able to read their client. Now some of you are saying, I'm not a coach, I'm not a healer, Vic. It doesn't matter. You're a good friend. You're an unusually good friend for this exact reason. Okay? Everybody in your life who considers you a friend, I guarantee, values you. Tell me if I'm wrong. I bet a lot of, I bet a lot of the people in your circle, co-workers, friends, family, they, they come to you when they got, a, they got life problems. In fact, they probably come to you often and it's probably exhausting to you. They probably come to you and they tell you all that's what's going on and you probably notice because you're such a good listener, an empathic listener, they start speeding up what they're saying and it's just like, and at the end, you're exhausted, but they feel amazing, okay? You have an ability to really read other people in a very unique way. You allow people to really feel heard. And that in itself is extremely healing, extremely cathartic for other people. That's an amazing, a beautiful spiritual gift. All empathic people straight up have at least two clairs. Maybe you've heard of the clairs, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, claircognizant. You have an expanded ability to either see, hear, feel, you walk and feel, you're all clairsentient and know. Okay, if you're clairvoyant, you may have like visions. You may be able to close your eyes and visualize beautifully and see things in a very rich way. A lot of people can't do that, me included. I'm not very, I'm not much of a visionary myself, okay? But some people are. Clairvoyants, they tend to be the ones that see orbs a lot, see flashes of color, see like, like not halos, but auras uh, around other people. Some of you clairvoyants can actually see the energy fields around people. And that gives you a lot of valuable information about a lot of things. Some of you are clairaudient, like my wife. I'll give an example. My wife, one time when she was a teenager, she was driving down the road and uh, she was sideswiped by a car. And she was, you know, there, she had gotten sideswiped and they were kind of like, you know, it, like moving like this. And my wife heard in her head loudly and clearly the voice of her grandmother say, stop, or no, and she said, hit the brakes. And she did. And this caused her to, you know, maneuver her car in a way that had her resulting inches away from a telephone pole that probably would have taken her life. She heard it. Her grandma's dead. She, she heard it in her ear. Some of you have that. If you ever like trying to get a read on someone, something, anything in life, sometimes you just you kind of hear it in your mind. That's clear audience. I have that a teeny bit, not very much. Clear sentient, you all have. You could all walk into a room and feel the vibe, feel the energy, right? You're going in for a job opportunity. Everyone seems nice, everyone's smiling. It's a nice place, looks like it's just recently built. Everyone's working hard and the, the boss is well-dressed, attractive, they sit you down and you don't take the job. Why? On paper it was fine, more money, everything looks fine on paper. Why didn't you take the job? Because it didn't feel right. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't resonate, right? You feel it. Or conversely, you go in and it's not what you expected but it feels so right. You do it because you know that what resonates is always going to be pleasing and beneficial and ideal for you. 
Clairsentience is something all empathic people have. You can feel, you, a lot of you think you feel too much. It's not too much. It just it takes time to learn to, to master and to tune out and, to, and to, to tune into the things that make you feel pleasurable, okay, and good. Um, but all of you have this clairsentient ability. And when you learn to hone it, it's, it can help you make wise decisions in all the important key areas of your life. Now, a lot of you are hearing all this and saying, I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. And you know what? I don't even feel that much. I'm not psychic at all. You, my friend, are probably the most psychic out of the whole bunch with your clear cognizance. What does that mean? It means you just know sometimes. Maybe you walk into the job and you're not even analyzing things. You're not seeing auras. You're not feeling anything. And uh, you don't even know if you care for your boss or not, but you just take the job. Why? Because you just know. Why'd you do it? I don't know. I just knew. I just, uh, I just had a feeling. I just sensed, it. I think it's right. I don't know why. When you are clear, cognizant, you know without knowing how you know, why you know, or where you learned it. You just know. This eliminates the need for the flashy auras and the cool grandmother speak, whispering into your ear to save your life. None of that, the, the stereotypical psychic phenomena is necessary when you just know. You cut right to the chase. But it's not as exciting. It's not as you know, flashy. So you, sometimes you don't feel psychic. But here's the thing, my friend. When you start acting on that knowing, you'll be blown away. Your life will improve so much when you just follow your intuition and act upon what you know is right for you. Number four, global consciousness, which is precisely why you're here. That's why a lot of you probably don't watch the news. Why? Well, for there's a lot of reasons why sort of higher conscious people don't watch the news, but you probably mainly is because you don't like how it makes you feel. They're not just images on the screen or names on the board. They're real people with real lives who are suffering that you can feel. You have the ability to see a, a forest fire and, and like almost cry on the inside for the life of that forest being burnt to ashes. It hurts you. Now this is something that makes a lot of empathic people not want to be here. They don't feel like they belong. They, they're like, Whoa. Life on Earth kind of sucks and pretty darn grim. I don't like it. I want to hide in a cave. But on the other side of the spectrum, you're the folks that actually do something to make positive change in the world. Because you can't just bury your head in the sand like other people. Because you feel too much. You can bury your head in the sand. You're still feeling what's going on. Right? You're the people who save the ocean, save the rainforest, help other people, to take the shirt off your back to help a homeless person who looks like they're cold on a cold winter night. You're that kind of person. And whether you, you, you save the world or not, it's, it's just your example. You inspire other people to, you remind other people that they also possess that same global consciousness, that same mindfulness, the same care and decency. And, and compassion and empathy inside of their hearts. And even though it's no longer socially acceptable or cool to exhibit that, you will because of that global consciousness. And that creates a very, very powerful ripple effect that will influence your friends, your family, the clerk at the grocery store, the person at the gas station you give the money to. Everybody is going to feel your global consciousness. It's in your blood, it's in your bones, it's in your energy. And it's, ex it's exact, it's the earth, the world, and you know this, you feel it, <laughs> desperately needs people like you to feel the reality, the circumstance we are all finding ourselves living in here and now, okay? The world needs you here and that's why you're here because you're connected deeply to it. And lastly, number five, all empathic people have the capacity to bring forth, to express the wisdom, the depth, the gifts, the talents, the abilities of their soul. That sounds awfully inspiring. What the heck did you just say, bro? <laughs> it's like this. Any great artist, musician, um, even, even athlete nowadays, if you notice there's a commonality among all of them, they don't take credit for their work because they know what they do isn't really them doing it. They're all channelers, they're all conduits for their soul's energy, their soul's passion, their soul's talent, their soul's creativity. 
and ask me, say, wow, they're a genius. They're brilliant. Oh my goodness. You all have that. You all have that ability to blow not only other people's minds, but your own mind with what you really are. And right now, most of the empathic people on the planet are going through quite a transformation. And there are a lot of changes unfolding in their lives. They don't know why. It's because it's, it's the time where the world really needs it for you to really discover what you're made of, discover who you are at the core, at the soul, in truth. And when you find it, there's going to be this unavoidable uh, like inspiration and passion and like desire to just express it, to just be it. And these talents you're sitting on, my friend, you might not even see coming, okay? For me, ironically, contrary to what I would have thought, the last place I would have looked was in public speaking. I love to speak. Even though it's all throughout high school, I was extremely shy, extremely insecure. When I would get nervous, I would literally blush and sweat. It was so frustrating. I would freeze up and clench up. I wanted no part of anybody. I wanted to live alone and, and write, have a few friends. And now I love to speak, okay? My wife was a hairdresser. She, she was like in uh, cosmetology, cosmetology, well, I don't know. But she does that in a fashion, fitness. And now she's like a, a practicing shaman healer type person. She loves to sing, she loves to heal. She's got the healing hands, very esoteric. Her family doesn't understand it. She barely does herself. It doesn't matter. What you have very well might surprise you. And that's exciting, okay? And even though a lot of you are right now currently on your path, not really know oh, what's coming, what's coming is more of yourself, more of, the, more of that soul talent that you have and came to express to the world. If you want to learn more about this, more about your abilities and you enjoy this video, I'm going to leave other videos that are very similar that will help you explore yourself, help you dive deep and uncover some of your own souls, maybe psychic talents and gifts. And with that said, I'm going to bounce. Have an amazing day, my friends. Namaste.